I am not really a keyboard guy, and this is not really a primary keyboard channel. I just don't get my socks knocked off like I used to back when gaming keyboards were making these massive strides. But there are two keyboards in early 2024 that just really have blown my mind. The ROG Felchion RX Low Profile is one of those keyboards from ASUS. This is a 65% form factor from ASUS that just has a really nice aesthetic and a really nice build quality. We're gonna get into the specs of this board, but low profile, optical switches, wireless performance, that really does feel absolutely amazing. And the board to boot really does perform very well, not only in gaming, but in other activities like editing and other things as well. Let's get into it. For gaming, I think the number one question is, how is the wireless performance? The button presses in wireless format to me feel one-to-one. -one. one of the tests I wanted to do was in Valorant with jiggle peeking. And if somebody told me that this board was wired, I'd absolutely believe them. There's just no perceivable input latency that I can feel from a human perspective. And if you're somebody who sits very far away from your TV or your screen, I feel like the wireless performance here is still spot on from the corner of my room. For a performance feel, I do think that the low profile optical switches here that are lubed actually feel very good, adding to the comfort experience, but also just a very nice feel in game that meshes very well with the fact that the case itself has a very minimal flex. Just so you guys know, the keyboard also has the Omni receiver and the Speed Nova wireless tech, so latency should be low, and you can also pair multiple devices with one dongle. The board's gonna be on your desk, it might be on hand cam. I think it's important for it to look good. From a design standpoint, the board looks pretty damn clean. You can see you've got the Republic of Gamers RGB strip on the top. The keycaps are laser etched, so the RGB will shine through. It is a white ABS that is UV coated, so it shouldn't be turning different colors anytime soon. And so far, the coating actually feels grippy in my humid climate during gaming sessions. You can see how thin the board is when you take it out of the bottom shelf, which you can keep it in or take it out and you can leave it like this. But you can see how thin the board is and the silver accents, again, mixed with the white. You've got the ROG logo there on the bottom left. On the bottom side of the board, you can see you've got some more uh, gray aesthetic there. You've got the two feet, the rubber stoppers. And then interestingly enough, on the top of the board, you've got your USB dongle storage, USB-C. You can go from a PC layout to a Mac layout, 2.4 uh, gig wireless to Bluetooth. And then you've got a touch bar here on top that you can see is actually changing the volume on my desktop. And you can actually change that in the software to different functions, which we'll get into here in just a second. A keyboard review is not a keyboard review without a sound test, so let's hear it. The nice thing about how the board feels, there is really no rattle, maybe just ever so slightly on the space bar, but the lube switches sound good and feel really good. It's kind of like a faint clack. It's not loud, it's not obnoxious. The quality of the switches because of that stem and how, quite, how high quality, everything is a very uniform feeling and there's no wobble. All settings on the board are pretty much controlled by the Asus Armory Crate. The first thing you'll notice is that with Armory Crate installed, when you click on the icon, it will actually show you the battery life uh, left on your keyboard. I'm at 97% right now, and I've been playing for three hours today, editing this video for probably four hours, um, and I haven't charged it for probably three days. So the battery life is really good. You get up to 105 hours if the RGB is running at 50%. Uh, in, uh, it, continuously, and you get up to 438 hours if you have RGB off. The keyboard does enter a sleep cycle if you're not pressing anything, but you can control that also with Armory Crate. When you open Armory Crate, and you'll be able to click on two different options, the receiver as well as the Falchion RX Low Profile. If you click on the receiver, it pretty much just shows you uh, what it's paired to, and you can see you can also pair a mouse because of that connectivity we were talking about earlier. And then when you click on the keyboard, you can actually remap keys. You can see you can change the touch panel that right now we have on system volume and the lighting. Right now I'm on raindrop, so I have that running obviously when it's not in sleep mode. And again, I've only lost 3% here 
over the course of playing three hours today and again that time editing this particular video. When you go into power, you can see that it will actually alert you when the battery is low. You can turn on and off power saving mode. And again, it shows you your battery life. And then you just have, of course, the ability to update your firmware. And now the time for closing thoughts. Am I gonna keep this thing? So the quick answer is yes, I am keeping the ROG Falchion on my desk for quite a while. I'm also gonna keep the Boog 75, yes guys. Two very different keyboards, one being wireless and one being wired, and of course a different typing experience, Hall Effect versus optical switches. But the ROG Low Profile is gonna be on my desk for one reason in particular that you guys don't see when you're watching these videos. I've got a massive tripod to my left of my camera. I've got my microphone and my lighting gear on my right. I've got things all around me. So when I'm recording a video and I'm trying to grab something and change a scene and edit, it is so nice to be able to just grab this and do what I need without having to reposition myself in my office and do different things in the video or on a scene or while editing. So for me, it's a really nice thing to have for the purposes of these particular videos. And then transitioning back into game, it's nice to be able to just do both and not have to worry about a cable and be able to edit without having to reposition myself. It's just a really nice thing for me in particular, but just for gaming purposes as well. I've kind of always wanted a good performing wireless keyboard, and this low profile board is not only one of the best low profiles I've tested, but one of the best wireless performance keyboards that I've tested for gaming as well. So if you're looking for performance, if you're looking for a low profile board, I think it should be one that's on your radar. That's gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.